Elizabeth Roseman Taylor entered the world on February 27, 1932, in Hampstead, London, England. Her parents, Frances Len Taylor and Sarah Viola Warmbrot, were Americans residing in the United Kingdom. In her early years, Elizabeth experienced the typical joys of childhood in London, surrounded by family in a comfortable home environment. However, the looming threat of World War II prompted the Taylor family to make a pivotal decision in 1939 to relocate to the United States in a bid to escape the turmoil unfolding in Europe. Upon settling in Los Angeles, California in 1940, the Taylor family inadvertently set the stage for Elizabeth's future in Hollywood. This move, motivated by a desire for safety, would significantly impact her burgeoning career in the film industry. As she grew up in Hollywood, Elizabeth's early exposure to the performing arts, including ballet and acting classes, provided the first glimpses of her remarkable talent, foreshadowing her future as a prominent figure in the entertainment world. At the tender age of nine, Elizabeth signed with Universal Pictures, marking the commencement of a cinematic journey that would shape her destiny. In 1942, at the age of 10, Elizabeth made her screen debut in There's One Born Every Minute, a testament to her early entry into the world of acting. The following year, MGM recognized her potential and signed her to a contract, solidifying her transition from a child actress to a Hollywood star. The early 1940s laid the foundation for Elizabeth Taylor's remarkable life, setting the stage for the captivating narrative that would unfold in the years to come. As Elizabeth Taylor transitioned into her teenage years, her journey in Hollywood gained momentum, and the pivotal year of 1944 saw her catapulted into the limelight with the release of National Velvet. At the tender age of 12, Elizabeth starred in this timeless classic, a film that not only marked a significant milestone in her career, but also secured her a lasting place in cinematic history. National Velvet, directed by Clarence Brown, was a heartwarming story about a young girl named Velvet Brown, played by Elizabeth Taylor, who dreams of training her horse, the Pie, to compete in the Grand National Steeplechase. Elizabeth's portrayal of Velvet was not only captivating, but showcased a depth of talent rarely seen in such young actors. The film's success was a testament to her ability to convey a range of emotions, from the exuberance of a determined dreamer to the intensity of a passionate equestrian. Released during the final years of World War II, National Velvet provided a much-needed escape for audiences dealing with the harsh realities of the time. Elizabeth's performance garnered critical acclaim and earned her a special juvenile Oscar, recognizing her outstanding contribution to the film. The movie's popularity and Elizabeth's endearing performance endeared her to audiences worldwide, establishing her as a teenage sensation. Despite the acclaim surrounding National Velvet, the filming process was not without its challenges. In 1944, during the production, Elizabeth faced a significant health setback. While performing a stunt involving a horse, she fell and suffered an injury that required back surgery. This incident, though a temporary interruption in her burgeoning career, highlighted Elizabeth's resilience and determination to overcome obstacles in pursuit of her passion for acting. The success of National Velvet not only solidified Elizabeth Taylor's status as a teenage star, but also set the stage for a prolific career that would span decades. Her ability to convey emotion and capture the hearts of audiences at such a young age hinted at the extraordinary talent that would continue to define her future roles in Hollywood. This early chapter in her life and career would become a touchstone, with National Velvet remaining a cherished film in the hearts of moviegoers and a cornerstone in the legacy of Elizabeth Taylor. The 1960s unfolded as a decade of immense personal and professional growth for Elizabeth Taylor. Her career reached new heights with the Academy Award for Best Actress in 1960, a prestigious accolade bestowed upon her for her compelling performance in Butterfield 8. The early 60s also witnessed the grand spectacle of Cleopatra, released in 1963, where Elizabeth's portrayal of the Egyptian queen became synonymous with the opulence and scandal surrounding her romance with co-star Richard Burton. The union of Elizabeth and Richard Burton, whom she met during the filming of Cleopatra, led to a tempestuous but highly publicized marriage in 1964. Their chemistry was further showcased in the critically acclaimed Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, released in 1966, earning Elizabeth her second Academy Award for Best Actress. The late 60s continued to spotlight her talent with Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew, released in 1967, co-starring with Burton.
Amidst professional triumphs, personal turmoil marked this era of Elizabeth's life. The divorce from Richard Burton in 1974, the first of two separations, signaled the end of a tumultuous chapter. Undeterred by challenges, Elizabeth Taylor forged ahead with her acting career, delivering notable performances in films like The Only Game in Town, released in 1970, and Hammersmith is Out, released in 1972. The 70s also witnessed a surprising shift in her personal life when she married John Warner, a Republican politician, in 1976, entering the realm of political involvement. Elizabeth's multifaceted life continued to evolve during these years, navigating the intricate balance between her professional pursuits, personal relationships, and newfound political engagements. The 1980s marked a significant phase in Elizabeth Taylor's life, characterized by diversification into business ventures, activism, and continued success in the entertainment industry. In 1985, she ventured into the business world by launching her own line of perfumes. Passion, released in 1987, and White Diamonds, released in 1991, emerged as particularly successful fragrances with the latter becoming one of the best-selling celebrity perfumes of all time. However, it was not just about business for Elizabeth during this period. Responding to the emerging HIV-AIDS epidemic, she became a vocal advocate for awareness and research. In 1985, she co-founded the American Foundation for AIDS Research, AMFAR, demonstrating her commitment to addressing the pressing health crisis. This dedication led to the establishment of the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation, ETF, in 1991, solidifying her role as a leading figure in the fight against HIV-AIDS. In 1990, her contributions were recognized with the Jean Hersholt Humanitarian Award at the Academy Awards, underlining her significant role in humanitarian causes. Despite the challenges of personal relationships, including her seventh and final marriage to Larry Fortensky in 1991, Elizabeth Taylor's life during these years reflected a woman of depth, involved in politics, business, enduring friendships, and dedicated philanthropy. As the new millennium unfolded, Elizabeth Taylor's commitment to philanthropy and HIV-AIDS advocacy remained unwavering. From 1992 until her passing in 2011, she tirelessly advocated for awareness and research through the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation, ETAF. Her celebrity status became a powerful tool in raising funds and bringing attention to the global HIV-AIDS epidemic. In 1993, she made a notable guest appearance in The Flintstones, adding a touch of Hollywood magic to the live-action adaptation of the beloved animated series. The mid-1990s posed health challenges for Elizabeth, including a near-fatal illness in 1994 that necessitated emergency surgery. Despite these personal setbacks, her resilience shone through, illustrating her unwavering commitment to her advocacy work. Queen Elizabeth II honored Elizabeth Taylor in 1999, naming her a Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire, DBE. This recognition not only celebrated her contributions to the entertainment industry, but also highlighted her significant humanitarian work. Throughout the 2000s, despite facing health issues, she made occasional public appearances, receiving awards such as the Screen Actors Guild Life Achievement Award in 2006. Elizabeth Taylor's final public appearance occurred in September 2009 at the Macy's Passport Gala, where she received an award for her philanthropic work. This event marked a poignant moment in her enduring commitment to charitable causes. On March 23, 2011, Elizabeth Taylor passed away at the age of 79 due to congestive heart failure, leaving behind a legacy of immense talent, resilience and advocacy. In her will, she ensured that her philanthropic impact would continue through significant bequests to the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation, transcending her lifetime. When Hollywood legend Elizabeth Taylor passed away in 2011 at the age of 79, she made one special request to be buried with a love letter written to her by ex-husband Richard Burton. Taylor and Burton had a famously passionate yet tumultuous relationship during their two marriages in the 1960s and 70s. The letter, received by Taylor shortly before Burton's sudden death in 1984, was kept safe in a bedside drawer for the next 27 years. It seems to have held deep sentimental meaning for Taylor, who reportedly reread the letter constantly despite their stormy history. For her, it represented a final declaration of Burton's enduring love. Taylor was no stranger to Hollywood scandal and tragedy in her personal life. 
In a 1997 magazine interview, she shared a confession actor James Dean made to her decades prior on the set of the film Giant. According to Taylor, Dean revealed that he had been sexually molested at age 11 by his minister in the difficult aftermath of his mother's death. Dean kept these painful revelations secret even from close friends. Taylor honored his confidence throughout her life, only sharing the story after Dean's infamous early death in a car crash. She commented that Dean's trauma likely contributed to his inner turmoil. Times have changed. Today, stars openly share personal revelations across social media by the hour. Yet Elizabeth Taylor carried the weight of James Dean's secret her entire adult life rather than reduce it to gossip, keeping faith in the haunted icon decades after his fatal crash. Before we conclude, let's take a moment to appreciate the remarkable life of this exceptional woman. Elizabeth Taylor was not just a star, she was a force of nature, a beacon of resilience, and a symbol of authenticity. With her captivating performances, trend-setting fashion, and dedicated philanthropy, she has left behind an enduring legacy that continues to inspire. Her life was a testament to the power of resilience, the beauty of authenticity, and the impact of unwavering commitment. Through her triumphs and tribulations, she showed us that true beauty comes from within, that strength can be found in the face of adversity, and that one person can make a significant difference in the world. As we remember her, let's celebrate her spirit, her courage, and her unwavering dedication to making the world a better place. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the life of the enigmatic Elizabeth Taylor. Subscribe for more such fascinating stories as we continue to explore the lives of the most intriguing personalities in history.